Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. York Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Wednesday, September 7th, 2022, and here are the readings for today. The first reading comes from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 12 through 15, chapter 10, verses 1 through 7. Brethren, the rendering of this service not only supplies the wants of the saints, but also overflows in many thanksgivings to God. Under the test of this service, you will glorify God by your obedience in acknowledging the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your contribution for them and for all the others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. I, Paul, myself entreat you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. I, who am humble when face to face with you, but bold to you when I am away. I beg of you that when I am present, I may not have to show boldness with such confidence as I count on showing against some who suspect us of acting in a worldly fashion. For though we live in the world, we are not carrying on a worldly war. For the weapons of our warfare are not worldly, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every proud obstacle to the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Look at what is there before your eyes. If anyone is confident that he is Christ's, then remind himself that he is Christ's, and so are we. And today's gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 3, verses 20 through 27. At that time, Jesus came to a home, and the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for people were saying, He is beside himself. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him, and he said in them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house is not able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder the house. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. So looking at today's gospel reading, there are a lot of little vignettes that happen within this particular account. The first is that he's in a home and his popularity is so intense that his family tries to grab him and take him home so that no harm comes to him. And then you have people saying he's beside himself because he speaks in a way that has an authority that no one is used to in his hometown. The scribes and the Pharisees say that he is possessed by Beelzebul or the prince of demons or Satan himself. And our Lord gently, or not really gently, but firmly points about this story of the house divided. When you think about a kingdom divided against itself, it cannot stand. We, sim- we are currently facing a similar dis- um, issue in our particular time in this country when we have two rival factions that see the other as a threat. So I'm going to leave that there. It's probably best that I not make any comments except to remind people as our Lord says, that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Same goes with a house and even Satan himself. So there's no way that Satan could be the giver of the malady and also the remover of the malady. And so he's basically saying that what they are telling people that he is able to remove these demons by the prince of demons, that obviously that cannot be so. And then no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder the house. Our Lord binds Satan and then goes and brings everyone that is in the house. This is a foretelling of what Jesus is going to do 
The goods, in this case, are the souls of all those who are held captive in the domain of the dead. And we see icon after icon of our Lord's triumphant entry into Hades, where Satan is bound with the very bonds that he has bound others in in the past. And so there we have scripturally an account of what Jesus himself is going to do when he enters into the realm of the dead. Satan, thinking that he is God's son, but not God, is fooled and is actually bound so that he is no longer able to um, inflict the harm on others as he was before Christ came and destroyed his domain. And so what we see in the icon of Christ's resurrection is his triumph over death and over the suffering and pain that were inflicted on humans by Satan because they were in his realm. His realm has no power anymore. He has no authority over any humans. And Jesus is triumphant, bringing life to all of those who at that time had no hope and bringing life to us, the ones who come after, so that we may be with God for eternity in bliss, peace, and love. And may God bless and keep you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. And thank you very much for joining me today. I pray you have a great day. And God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.